morning ladies and gentlemen I welcome us all of us back to the lectures we have been having or we're about to have the lectures today centers on an, uh, an important topic and which of course serves as the foundation or what we can call the foundation or the foundation that is this, the source of communication the beginning of it the beginning of what communication so here we are going to look at the introduction to communication communication systems communication models and networks so all of these things are going to be discussed in our class today or in our lectures today now all of us one way or the other all of us one way or the other are involved in um, communication on daily basis on daily basis and if we have to look back or we have to go by the holy writs we we'll discover that um, communication is an ancient art it's an ancient act and it is not just an ancient act is an ancient act identifiable with God is identifiable with God that is God was the first person that actually started communicating before all of us picked it up from there and what we mean is that communication actually started with God and if you have to go I said the Holy Read that they should go by the Quran or by the Holy Spirit I mean by the Bible we have all of that there the beginning of the beginning or what we call the creation story it started with what God communicating let there be and that is what communication and when when it happened like that let there be what happened there was a response and from there communication started so that's why I said communication is an ancient act an ancient act and it is part and parcel of what it's part and parcel of um, existence now let's go straight to the definition of communication definition of communication is have the word communication uh, is derived from the Latin word communis let's identify the definition of communication from the word what demonis which means what common this means that individual involved in communication by this definition attempts to ensure a common basis for understanding what the message that is communicated between them what we mean by this is that there must be something to warrant communication something must prompt communication there must be a, a reason for communicating or for communication to take place before we can even think of what embarking on the exercise so it won't just happen like that there must be basis for it and that is what we mean by what common basis for understanding the message that is what communicated between them a more authorized definition of communication is that what is by the American Society of what of directors who says that was a good communication is the interchange of thoughts or information to bring about what mutual understanding and confidence or human relations interchange of thoughts or information something you share between two or two people share something in common and it's for what to bring about mutual understanding right it is not one-sided thing it is more it is more of it is something that follows uh, the principle of symbiotism 
that is it follows the principle of reciprocity as you give so you receive back not that you give and it goes that direction and it doesn't come back or there is no return from that this, that direction to which it has been given that is not what we are talking about that what but we say what a good communication is the interchange that is interchange of thought or information that you exchanging of what thought information about mutual understanding and confidence or good human relations if we don't look at it this way if you just say it has to do with what it has to do with information and uh, what is it called information and thought and the rest of them and we fail to put there that it has to do with interchange definitely if one even think of something that means one without even expressing it or without sharing it with another person that one can interpret that as communication but it is not so communication is it's not just what it's not our it's not what we perceive it's not what we think of it's not an idea that is what latent within us it's not an unexpressed idea but it has to do with what an idea that is exchanged it must have been thought of it must have been conceptualized then it must have well, after that then it has to be what exchanged and the exchange has to go between what two before we can think of what or talk of communication taking place then you have another authority in communication is by the name what Mary Ellen Goofy and this one defines communication as what transmission of information and meaning from one individual to another that is its meaning we have two ends involved in communication not just one end we have two ends and those those two ends must have something that um, establish or something that combines or bring them what that brings them together and that is what that the message right of communication then communication however is not limited to the art of what speaking or writing but also covers body language personal manners and the way and styles these are what exhibited that's non-verbal what cues so communication is not just speaking writing and listening and giving responses not just that there are is is is, a, is an all encompassing concepts yes including the on the on the, do i say the non verbal cues let me put it that way the non verbal cues that is the ideas we do not express but we act at times we don't talk but we act and people say action or actions speak louder than voice yes at times you act and it can become one can communicate through what through action or actions right or integrated actions that is what we mean what we mean by that, that is it has to do with what body language personal manners and the way and styles these are exhibited that is communication in effect communication is a two-way that is as a result of that communication is what is a two-way process and it's not complete without feedback meaning it involves a sender and what and a decoder it's as simple as that however I will have to tell us here that these facts all the explanation we are giving on communication and these facts is further established by the words these facts is further established by by the the theories of communication models so what we are simply saying here is that the communication model that is communication model what it all entails is source of a page that is identity of the source of a message then the identity of the words the receiver a two-way thing it goes from one end to the other end then comes from the other end back to the what the first end these are the things we're talking about here 
Now let's look at a different perspective of communication. A different perspective of what? Communication. How do we perceive communication? In the ancient time, at the different times of, I mean, um, different, uh, ad, how do we perceive communication? That is, perspectives or different, different ways communication is what is interpreted. How is it seen by some people? How, uh, how do some other people see it? Right, the various need their view points and or a uh, perspective of communication as presented by various writers are you have modern perspective, you have interpret interpretive perspective, you have critical perspective, and you have post modern perspective. These are the perspective which we have, or these are the angles about which we can actually what explain communication so what is the modern perspective of communication having said something basically on communication now what is the modern perspective of communication the modern perspective of communication assumes fundamentally that managers and other superiors engage in workplace communication for instance must have some level of control in order that they are able to intervene as and when as at and when necessary. That's a modern perspective. You must have or you must be in charge. You cannot uh, if you if we want communication to actually be effective especially in an organizational setting then the encoder or the person who is the source of the message must wield some influence, or must have some me uh, measures or some levels of what control over the subord his, his or her subordinate or the people he wants to pass the message across to. Right? So, must have some level of control in order that they are able to intervene as and when necessary. This modern perspective of communication has tended to be to has tended to see organization as more complex phenomena that cannot be fully understood using the tools of what natural science. That is what we are talking about here now. This modern perspective. So what this one is talking about that is that if you are in charge and there is information for people to act on tendencies are that people like that will listen people like that will listen because they know from where they know the person that uh, has given the message across is equally capable so they will have to think about a lot of things before they refuse especially in an organization to do what they want to what they want to look at the person they wouldn't want to um, uh, to do otherwise because they know the person can do and undo so you have we said this modern perspective of community has tended to see organization as what? As more complex phenomenon that cannot be fully understood using what? Using the tools of natural science. Yes. Well, that is just the modern perspective. You look at it from the angle that whoever is the message giver must be in charge, he must be the boss, he must wear some kind of control. He must just um, not unnecessarily puffing or not unnecessarily showing off anyway, but then he just must appear to be there so that people can always have someone to fall back on, but not just that alone. So 
and once he will that what that power people will see or they will see that this person is worth listening to all right because there won't be contrary views that is why it is what it is modern perspective that we are considering here the modern perspective here right the interpretive perspective the interpretive perspective this perspective tends to be less concerned with generalized theory but aim but aims at it aims at revealing the complexity and richness of communication how complex how rich is communication the concern of this perspective is not to generalize theory it's not just to generalize but the concern is what communication is rich and communication is complex it has been established that interpretive perspective of has, has some linkage to the ethnographic tradition in anthology in anthology of course we're talking about interpretative perspective of communication of said and we have talked about the complexity involved and the richness of communication here it has been we said it has been established that interpretative perspective of communication has some linkage to what ethnographic tradition in anthropology was all about that what is that all about rather we have scientific study of people culture and their what and their society that is you interpret communication based on these variables based on these factors that is interpret or perhaps give meaning to communication based on this what's this um uh, what's it called information an application of ethnographic study to communication therefore we imply that researchers must spend lengthy period in the field of communication using qualitative method like observation record conversation stories and other activities bordering on communication especially in offices assembly plant and informational or informal relationships right that is that so what we are actually saying here is that the interpretive perspective is too scientific and it's cumbersome to employ in what in um, trying to explain or trying to um, uh, interpret or perhaps trying to express what communication is all about so and that's uh, from there we go on to what the critical perspective the critical perspective The idea behind the critical perspective is linked with the ways communication channels are used to exercise power over employees in an organization, for example. How do we employ communication channels to exercise power over employees in an organization? We have research information on methods found in the modern and um, interpretive world perspective is also relevant to the critical perspective of communication. The first two stages or the first two perspectives of communication actually provide a canon folder or actually provide a take off or the foundation for this critical perspective. The critical perspective, however, uses a more skeptical approach, and this means a certain degree of what critic of the manner in which communication evolves. That is, you the the you look at the channels, right? Channels involved in communication. You look at those channels, 
right there is a kind of what criticism on those channels criticism on those channels that is if we have to base communication on these channels alone then can we say at the end of the day we are going to have something effective we are going to have something reliable we are going to have something that is um uh, what is it called etana or something that can always stand the test of time so that is critical perspective is simply talking about or making reference to what to the channels involved in communication that those channels are not just words they are not what matters per se or they are not the most important element in communication those is not the channels are not the most important element in uh, uh, of aspects of communication they ma they too matter they too are of importance right they are of importance but at the same time what about what what about the the encoder what about the 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 receiver we can leave out those two and focus on what on the channel alone the channel will not make communication but the channel exists because what communication is what is needful that is why we create a vehicle to do what to communicate so we have so it is not what about the channels there say the channels the channels of communication matter but they are not they are not the ultimate without without the message the message let's say involving the encoder and the decoder postmodern perspective of communication postmodern perspective of communication the postmodern perspective was it all about the postmodern perspective challenges the assumptions of the modern perspective for example it challenges the assumption of modern perspective of what of communication what example there the way and the manner in which research is used in the evolution of theory of communication science that is the theory that is something to establish communication in which the, the research used in establishing the theory of what of communication the manner in which it is used is what this postmodern perspective is criticizing and what is it talking about really say the main focus of the modern perspective view is that there is no natural access there is no okay neutral rather neutral access to the world as portrayed by what by modernists neutral no nobody can be neutral in this case communication is believed may be influenced by variables such as language globalization contemporary trends the internet and the rest of them all these variables affect communication there is no how we can talk of communication without some or all of these things so postmodern perspective of communication is not limiting what communication as a concept limiting it to what is used to be or limiting it to what um to the ethnographic what uh, 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 idea 
of communication or limiting it or leaving that and going to the aspect the one that talks about what the aspect of channel that is focusing on the channel instead of what the message and the the messenger right but this time around he's talking about what and it is not just talking about the modern perspective alone which probably talks about what is um uh uh the way we go what is the traditional way we go about what communication but this time around he's talking about what some other variables and what are these other variables here we they call it postmodern perspective the communication may be what influenced by variables such as language globalization contemporary trends such as what the internet so all of these things all of these things they have their take on communication all of these things affect communication one way or the other take for example now language the general language in the world is what's the general language how do we say international language english language is one of the international languages that we know but it is not everybody that understands what english to the extent of using it to communicate all right so if there is arrangement to reach out to a mass of people or to reach out to people or to a um, to people far and wide what happen this language cannot be used universally because it's not everybody that understands it's not everybody that uses it they are going to be what com noise in the process of what communication and this will kind of um call for this will kind of call for uh, interpretation that is using local dialect or vernacular to explain or interpret what is being said and so if this continues or if um uh, if it if it happens this way then it is becoming you discover that what communication there is becoming what complex is becoming cumbersome to handle is becoming more than just what the basic things so in the modern perspective we have various what we have different things that are just what cropping up and making communication uh, 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 more than what it used to be and that is why they call it one postmodern perspective of what there are lots of issues involved in communication nowadays there are lots of issues involved in communication and that is true there are a lot of issues involved in communication it used to be primary it used to be primary that is basic before but nowadays we have a lot of accessories we have a lot of things to consider a lot quite a number of things right so depending on what depending on us and depending on the message that we want to get across and who we want to get it across to that was more than what um postmodern perspective of communication then this time around we are going to the goals of communication this is very very simple of course we know that communication is what is very vital in the process of management right it daily, it daily occurs in our work at workplace and in our daily lives so what are the goals of communication we can identify for here first of all why do we what is the aim what is the target why communication we said to improve what recipient levels of what understanding of the message communicated who is the recipient the receiver to elicit receivers what response why we communicate is to have a reply if you have if you communicate and there is no reply then a, a quite a number of things will start what's happening there so 
coming to elicit what response to create good relationship that's what communication does right to create good relationship right either in the organization either at the official level and as we say is formal communication or the informal uh, 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 system either formally or informally formally we mean what organization informally we mean probably at the family unit or at individual level with what with other so what communication does is what to create to open an avenue to reach understanding to open an avenue to reach understanding if two people or if a couple is living together and one is talking and the other one is not talking then we can we can imagine the anxiety or perhaps the kind of frustration that will come upon the one talking because virtually everything he does he whatever he is not receiving a feedback whether positive or negative and so he doesn't know if what he does or what he's doing is bad or is good to create organizational goodwill is communication the goodwill of all stakeholders that the organization deals with such as what the clients the suppliers the customers government the community is necessary for the continued operation of the business so we need communication in these four areas these four areas these items or the extent mentioned they actually what they are things that communication actually get across to people right those are the things why people communicate